my biggest ever. Success as a guide is measured by incredible fishing. That is the ultimate in partnership and How you teamwork. Like that, brother? How you yeah. like that? The ability to adapt. Yeah, let's move. Stunning locations. This place is awesome. And I'm satisfied clients. Place, too. <laughs> First place. <laughs> I'm Mark Melnick, and this is Guided. Black Fly Lodge, where fly fishing for bonefish is a way of life. Ooh, what a fish. Located on the Bahamian island of Abaco, Black Fly Lodge is considered a top tier, world class lodge with almost untouched access to an equally world class fishery. This is Clint Kemp. He's one of the co owners here at Black Fly Lodge, deep in the south of Abaco in the Bahamas. Clint, you've brought me down here for a guiding expedition unlike anything. World class fishery, world class fish, and soon to be a world class fishing lodge. Yeah, good to have you here, Mark. Thank you. So, what are we up to? Today we're going to fish in the southern part of Abaco, which is surrounded by deep water. We've got blue water, we've got big permit, big bonefish, tarpon, all kinds of species to fish for. Well, I'd like some bonefish with this wind. Uh, you think we can get going? No problem. We're in this part of Abaco that's only a half mile between the blue water on the, wet, on the east and the flats on the west. So it makes for a very unique fishery because we can be in both places within five minutes. The fishery is the reason for the location of Black Fly Lodge, access to basically anything you want to fish for, inshore or offshore. So Clint, the last time I had a fly rod in my hand, something went colossally wrong. I had three or four days of being able to cast in the wind 50, 60 feet, and all of a sudden something changed. Either I'm holding my eyesight wrong or my tongue's not sitting in my mouth properly. I think the first thing that I need to do is fix this before I have the opportunity to guide anybody. All right. We move into open water and Clint takes a look at my cast. See, something's happened and the whole thing's just falling apart. I'm not getting any extension on my cast. Yeah, no, I see a few issues. Just keep casting. <laughs> your rod tip is sort of dancing as it goes back. There's a lot of movement in your tip, in the tip of your rod. I'll tell you, like my golf instructor told me, man, you got, you got the basic stuff down. We just got to work on a few little details here. Your thumb on the back cast slides over to here and then and then the forward cast, you're putting it up here. So it's moving your whole hand around on the handle. So what you want to do is keep your thumb planted right in the well mm -hmm. and your index finger right behind it. So you have a consistent pull and push. That's what's causing the tip of your rod to be doing that kind of dancing. There you go. Now the other thing, I'm going to just give you a little improvement on the haul. Mm -hmm. When you haul, watch my haul hand. This is where all your line strength comes. You see where I'm going? I'm going over the reel. I'm coming back to my back pocket. Line hand is where your strength is coming. Gotcha. So you're bending the rod way down into here. Now, I know this sort of goes against convention, but the, the truth is in the wind, this is what, what you want. Traditionally, everyone's taught to cast stopping at 10 and two. What a lot of my friends like Prescott Smith and other great uh, Bahamian guides have come up with is think about it instead of stop and start, is that you're actually, the rod tip is actually like going around a racetrack. If you'll notice how I'm casting, I'm going down the oval. The rod is slowing down on the, on the turn and coming back around and throwing over. But the hull stays the same throughout the motion. The hull is always working. So the two things are working in conjunction. Your physics tells you that it's much harder to stop and start something. It takes more energy. If, and if it's already in motion, it's much easier to defeat the wind. And it's much easier to throw this thing and make this rod work like it was intended to work. With a couple of quick suggestions, things turn around and I'm back on track for now. Beautiful, bro. That's it, man. 70 foot. We can catch fish now, man. Awesome. Excellent. <laughs> we head out to start fishing. One of the biggest issues I have is seeing the fish, and the weather isn't helping matters. But Clint sees things in a different way. Every flat's a little different. If you get a hard white sand flat, you don't see anything. It's just subtle color differences. That's what the game is, though, right? Is You have to be able to spot these fish. What you're looking for is movement in the water. We point out sharks, turtles, anything. Until you get adjusted to what we're looking at, yeah, it's really tough. Clint, is it safe to say that cloudy days are dead days when you're a bone fisherman? They're very hard days, that's for sure. It's like fishing in the dark. As a guide on a day like today, would you bother even going out? Yeah, man, you always go out. You got to fish it like you find it. If it's just clouds, you got to deal with it. You can't catch fish from the comfort of your living room. Absolutely. <laughs> 
Clint has a unique perspective on fly fishing. Fishing to me is ultimately a spiritual experience. One of the few places in life where you can really get in touch with your soul, with yourself. One of the most important realities of spirituality is being still and knowing. And I think that's what fly fishing is, man. It's just stilling your soul and that's how I see it, man. It's just like experiencing the wind, the sun, all the elements, the fish. It, it really is a, an amazing, magical experience. Look at this, look at that, wow. I stuck my pole back there and I, I pulled it up and I felt this. <laughs> Did he bite it? No, he, 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 I felt, I felt him, I felt the swish of his tail, man. <laughs> hey, Mark, man, we're getting into some great permit uh, territory here. A lot of uh, rocky bottom and the tide's right, so I want to get prepared so that we, if we see one, we can throw at him. But I want to show you this fly we're going to use. You see, it, it looks like a crab. Identical to a crab. Yeah, it's an amazing little fly. It's going to fall straight down. You're going to come tight and just stay tight and twitch it if you need to. But typically, the fish will hit it right when it's falling or right when it gets to the bottom. Yeah. It looks too much like a crab. It's irresistible. OK, here he comes now. Mark, give me cast to the mouth of the creek right now to the right-hand side. That spooked him. Leave it right there. Strip, strip, strip. Let me tell you why that fish spooked. The strip popped the line. OK. If you pop that line on the top of the water, boom. You Gone. hear that? Yeah. It's got to be smooth. I got him, I got him, I got him. Don't, don't hold the line. Good. Let him go, let him go. Good fit. I don't care how they come, man. I'll take them. Gotta love I that. I spooked him. He came back on it. Gotta love that. Fish is coming straight out. Here he goes. Don't, don't let it bounce too much. My problem is, is that I've got a lot of line out here. He's coming right back at me, and I know that there isn't a barb in this hook. So what? how do I play this fish? That's why you want to always fish, bite bone fish to the side. The belly of the line will keep resistance and keep the hook in their mouth. Good play, good play. If he goes to one side, you go to the other. Perfect. There you go. Nice. All right, Mark, I'm going to come down and help you land that fish properly and show you how we try to take care of the fish. I like to just grab the leader, and we won't even, we won't even touch this fish. I'm just going grab to the, grab the hook with our forceps. There we go. Excellent job, my friend. Thank you very much. Great. It, it was, a, it was a, a, a struggle fish, we'll call that. And with that, the skunk is off the boat. With nasty weather a ways off, we decide to keep fishing. Mother Nature suddenly plays dirty. A cold front moves in, but Clint isn't phased. A day like today is about as hard as it gets because the conditions are so bad. But this is where you really got to stick with it and see if you can make some magic happen. Going to the left, going across to 11 o'clock. I got him. Yep, you're getting ready for the shot. Let's get a cast up in the air. Hold on one second. Let me give you a turn. Coming in. Ah, shit. All right, something spooked the hell out of him. Look at that big cooter right in front of you at 12 o'clock. Yeah, it's a big cooter. It's probably what something's came in there and spooked those fish. And that's finally enough to push us off the water. Better safe than dead. Rise the next day and are excited to see the weather is playing along. We get the boat ready and head out to the southern tip of Abaco, to Sandy Point, in pursuit of other guidable species, tarpon, permit, and of course, big bonefish. However, as soon as we get set, Clint bails on the plan and has something incredibly unique up his sleeve. I think we have an opportunity to scoot over to Moores Island. What's out there? Typically, you find large fish, all the species that we're after. And I just think we have an opportunity to go there. So it's a rare treat. I think we should take advantage of it. We pull up to a perfect sand flat and get lucky immediately. In the dark water now to the left at 11 o'clock. See, 12 o'clock. Come right. There's, there's the fish. OK, looks like a permit. Coming like he's coming right at us. Pass. OK. Come tight, come tight. Just twitch it, twitch it, see if you'll see it. Here he comes. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Yeah, yeah baby. Yeah. Let him go. How do you like that? Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Let's see if he'll treat you good and we'll get him to the boat. Talk, talk to me about backing. We might have to get on the engine with him. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd get on the engine. OK. So I've got 80 pound vicious braid on here. OK, you're good. You're good. Let's don't panic yet. What are you talking about? This is all about panic. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you're the man. You're the man. I'm a quarter on him a little bit. Excellent. All right, let's see if we can get him in. Oh, nice. I've never even seen a permit. I've been fishing for him all my life, and I have never landed one. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. You put it right on him, came tight. Quint, I couldn't have done it without you, man. Yeah, he circled up there and came back and ate it. I just hope my knot holds. Hell yes, let's hope everything holds. We're in good shape. <laughs> Keep the line over his back. This is what I, I enjoy watching you get it, though, brother. <laughs> it's just like catching it myself. Woo, what a fish. What a fight. There you go. So yeah, they're, they're difficult, you know? They're just tough fish. It's like fighting a garbage can. Exactly. Those head shakes make me so nervous. Yeah, you got to keep, that's why you got to keep the rod bent toward him a little bit. Give him a little bit of rod. There you go, beautiful. Now you got him coming toward us. Here you go, pick up some line. That's a big fish, man. OK, one more push. We got to be able to. I'll be able to get her in. We're going to get her boat side. I'm going to grab her by her tail. And then. Oh, oh man. How do you like that, brother? How do I like that? That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take a piece. That's beautiful. Oh, my yeah, goodness. <laughs> Clint, I can't believe it, man. You've hooked up so many of these in your lifetime. You've never landed one. There you go. My first to the boat. Yeah. Only because of you, my that's friend. Beautiful, man. All right. Absolutely beautiful. Congratulations. 28 pound permit. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. To be able to come to South Abaco and catch giants, it's absolutely wonderfully perfect. You've got to do this. Well, my brother, you're in luck. <laughs> um, as a tradition on my boat, usually at the end of the day, I have a little something something to celebrate. Nice. So congratulations. Here's to you, bud. Thank you. Nice. You've got something in store for me. Yeah, well, let's let's see if we can uh, top that just a little bit, because we're on a flat that uh, typically holds some tarpon, and we land that, you know what we're headed toward. Bonefish. So exactly. the IGFA, the International <laughs> Game Fish Association, has a, a level of prestige in angling. And if you can catch a bonefish, a permit, and a tarpon all in the same day, it's called an IGFA Inshore Grand Slam. That's what we're going to try for. Let's go, man. I got this goose, is, I got yeah, goose man. <laughs> Right there, 50 feet, close it. Cat, drop it. Strip, got it, got him. Good fish. Yeah, Mark. Good fish. Put it right where it needed to be. I saw him the whole way coming Beautiful at casting, me. my friend. Beautiful casting. Now, again, these are barbless hooks, so you gotta be on them. Well done, brother. Well done. Oh, big head shakes. These fish will typically take two or three big runs. That's it, yeah. side to side, just like that. Beautiful. This fish finally knows that it's hooked. <laughs> I gotta make one, he's gonna make a huge run back toward you. That's it. And I put that fly right on that fish's nose. Yep, that was perfect, perfect cast. That is the music. Absolute music. That's music right there, baby. Okay. Help you with the boat here a little bit. Oh man, this might be the biggest bone fish I've ever caught. Yeah, that's five pound fish. I get a shot. Look at that. It's spectacular. That's number two of three for an IGFA inshore Grand Slam. Where are we off to? We're going to a, a place we can't get the boats. In our attempt to complete our inshore Grand Slam, we head back to a secret location Clint knows of near where we started our day back on Abaco. Whoa, look at this. Pretty cool, huh? Clint and I fished for a good four hours well into the evening, and though there were tarpon around, they simply weren't eating. One of Clint's personal frustrations are tarpon. There simply is no rhyme or reason to their behavior. Full rainbow. The sign, my friend. Not for lack of trying, we just couldn't come tight, and our grand slam attempt is unsuccessful. Clint, what an unbelievable day. You know what, I learned two things. Number one is in order to be a great guide, you need to have the versatility to do a lot of different things. And number two, I love hermit fishing. <laughs> <laughs>
The next morning, things start out a little differently. Clint looks at the weather and decides to play a very different card. The wind is laid down, and we have yet another shot at a very unique fishery. Versatility has to be the key, and that's what I love about Blackfly Lodge is the weather's changed, Clint, and we're in for a whole new experience today. Exactly, man. If it's blowing from the west like it is today, we're going to go in the blue water, which is a half mile offshore. So the new lodge sits right here on the harbor. We'll be out of here and into the blue water for maybe some dolphin. Nice. All right, so we weren't trolling for more than 15 minutes. OK, we've got fish on that one. Dolphin on, off the rigger. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, OK. Concentrate on the fly rod. All right, so we put it put it in the rod holder. <laughs> All right. They're come back. Yeah, strike on. Fish on. Hold him tight, hold him tight. Here they come for your fly. He's on, he's on, he's on, he's on. Yeah, yeah. baby. Yeah. I'm going to keep a little chum in the water. Oh, no. Oh, no, you're in the rigger. I'm in the rigger. See, that's the cool thing about bailing dolphin, is that once they're here, you keep the chum going, and they'll stick around the boat forever. In this case, until I get my fly off the rigger. Total rookie move. Come on. Here he comes. Whoa. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Man. Yeah. This is so much fun. Ah, mahi for dinner tonight. Woohoo! Hey, Clint, do me a favor. Pass me a gaff. I'll hit this one quick, and I'll get another one on the fly. Let me get this one in. Yeah, All right. Nice. You can fly out. You're good to go, man. You want to go catch another get one? another one, man. These fish are growing so fast, and they've spawned. These are schoolies, and um, they're growing just at a phenomenal rate. They're voracious feeders. Man, this is so cool. This is such an unbelievable fishery. You're going to have to do some back casting action. Here they come. Woo. It's hard work, but when you hook up, man, it is a thing of beauty. A delicious dinner. I love me some mahi sandwiches. Broke them off. Broke them off. Missed them. Rookie mistake. That's what it's all about, man. Mahi, mahi on the fly with Black Fly Lodge. You talk about versatility, they've got it all. I had no idea that this even existed. I knew that you could bail dolphin, but I had no idea that you could catch them so readily on the fly. I'm brand new to this when it comes to fly fishing offshore. It's heaven. It's heaven on the water. You're a lucky man. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> But Clint isn't done yet. As the wind shifts to the west, he shows us another unique fishery, wade fishing for tailing bonefish. You know, as a guide, you need to have a place where you can take your pies no matter what happens. If the weather turns really bad, we've got a big cold front coming on us. So we're going to a secret spot. We're going to have to walk through a forest to get there. Not a lot of people know where it is. So I'm going to take you there today. All right, well, let's get this right, party started. <laughs> Clint, this looks absolutely incredible. There's flat as far as you can see. How do you fish something like this? The biggest thing about wade fishing is, is being quiet. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of push with the water if you're trudging through. The fish can feel that movement way far away. So I like to tell people, walk like a bird. If you can hear yourself, the fish can hear you 100 feet away. OK. OK, my friend. You see the tailing fish out there? I do. Yeah. There's a huge school out there. You walk out there, there's a lot of fish, probably at least 50 or 60 fish. Oh, it's, the school's huge. Yeah. It's from here? Way out, way out there. Way out there. That is hard okay, work, Mark. Let's, let's, let's land this fish. He's staying with the school. He's staying. Hanging with his pals? Yeah. Keep your rod tips steady, steady. Steady down. Ooh. There you go. He knows he's hooked now. There you go. Man, your patience, good, 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 your good, patience good. is unbelievable. <laughs> Coming right at us. Give him a little bit of rock. There you go. Eyes out. All right, man, I just want to say thank you very much for an unbelievable week. You've opened my eyes up <laughs> to what's possible here. And uh, Excellent. You think I'm ready for tomorrow? You are ready, man.
guide day, the wind hasn't changed a bit from last night, so I make the decision to take my client back to the waiting flat in search of tail and bonefish. This is John Darbelath, the president of Rail Riders Adventure Clothing Company. John, look at this. It is bonefish paradise. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off down at that end of the creek, yep. and we're going to work our way out and then the on the far edge of that bank. All right, you've got uh, everything you need. You're all everything set? Everything I need, ready to go. OK, let's catch some bonefish. So John, what is it about fly fishing that brings you back time after time? I fell in love with it from day one. I don't have all the te technique yet, but you know I'm a firm believer that the day you stop learning is the day you die. And uh, learning while doing something adventurous in a place like this, you know, how can you how can you top it? Right. So what I want to do is um, I want to go out into the center of this creek here, and then you know we're going to see if we can see some bonefish. Right. So cool. Lemon shark? Looks like it. Hey, right, bring him in. OK. Let's just sit tight here. We've got fish at 12 o'clock to where we're standing. There's a slick spot. Mm -hmm. I saw tails popping up in there. Drop it in front of them. Come on in. Spooked him. John and I fished the entire incoming tide. And unfortunately, I only spot that one fish. This shows just how incredibly talented bonefish guides truly are. And luckily, John is taking it all in stride. Tay, you couldn't ask for a more beautiful day, though. Sometimes it's not about catching fish, it's just about being out here. Isn't it? It's always manana. So I guess the question is, would I pay to have Mark guide me? I'm not sure. Would I go fishing with him anytime, just him and me all the time? Absolutely. The only saving grace in all this is that it goes to show that if you're going to come to an area like this, you need a guide. You can't come out here and do this on your own. Truly, when we came this morning, I thought we were going to be into a lot of fish. I thought that, you know, the tide was right, the weather was right. I would give Mark somewhere in the sea range. <laughs>